Right, we just finished dinner. Oh, it was great. I'm full now. And you know what? All the other guys, they are just mingling over there. Uh, and Reisi Gutta, uh, they are about to eat and drink alcoholic drinks. So that means they will not be able to drive the I-Pace, which I, <laughs> I asked them if they can let me it, and they said, yes, of course. Uh, so I said, well, I mean, do you need some authorization from Jaguar? They're like, I don't know. So I'm like, yes. So just as planned, I'm going to test the I-Pace. It's 11 at night now, Saturday night, so very little traffic. I need to juice up the I-Pace a little bit. Uh, and then I want to test consumption. I think that's the only thing we have time for now to test consumption like um, but that's what everyone wants to know about uh, some people are actually waiting for me to test that thing so uh, as I have some people have a theory that the consumption number is wrong so one way to test it is we know the one unknown variable which is um, how many kilowatt hour is available in the car at 100% uh, so what I'll do is I'll charge it to whatever and then discharge it to whatever, see how many percent we spend and then based on the distance we can try to estimate the consumption and see if that corresponds with uh, whatever the trip meter tells us. Yes, so <laughs> let's get to work when everyone else is uh, slacking here. Yeah, that's the Tesla Bjorn style. Okay, yeah, it's over there. Yes, see, there it is. Um, the I-Pace, it probably has uh, about 30% stable charge. So he was happy that I can charge the thing for him. And uh, they're going to drink Corona. So none of them <laughs> will be able to drive today, <laughs> tonight. Tomorrow morning, they might be able to drive again. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Now let's find out everything about this car. <laughs> All right, so I have charged the car to 75%. Uh, it took a while, it's a big battery, and it seems like it charges at around um, uh, 45 kilowatt. Yeah, 45, 46 kilowatt, which is pretty good. Uh, and ooh, what is this? Uh, the reflection. Oh, you know what? It seems like this the front gel. Oh, 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 yes, the front windscreen is heated. Yeah, I see the those uh, heater elements just like in the e-golf didn't know that but 75 percent and um, we will restart the trip meter uh, we have to do um, a highway test like nine uh, yeah, I, will, I will cruise at 90 kilometers per hour that's the only test we can do around here uh, we can't do 110 120 kilometers per hour so let's do 90 kilometers per hour test and see the consumption here and then after a while I don't know how long we have to drive maybe like an hour and then we we'll come back and see uh, yeah let's do some calculations then oh yes let's go well, the first thing I find out is uh, how inaccurate uh, this speedometer is and I uh, checked the GPS you have to cruise at 94 kilometers per hour for the GPS to show 90 so it's at these speeds yes we have four kilometers per hour off so fair enough as expected the consumption is high but this is uh, this is the nature of uh, you know, especially heavy cars like this is that we have some uh, kinetic energy in the car so of course if we regen down to zero then uh, the consumption will be way lower um, so um, it's already down to 73 percent we have to drive a while uh, maybe drive it down to 25 because if we only do a measurement of let's say um, uh, 10 20 percent then there's way too much um, measurement error round of error so what you have to do is um, drive a lot <laughs> maybe 50 percent and then you will get a more correct reading the, the ideal one is to drive I mean to charge it to 100 percent and then discharge it to zero uh, for the most correct reading but I guess a 50 percent chunk is still uh, good enough and uh, I will try to learn more about this car I need to learn a lot about this car because I've never driven a Jaguar before so it gets gets a little bit of a uh, used to uh, but you know with every car it's like you can learn how to use every car and once you learn it then it's no problem for you to use it I mean it can, can be troublesome for other people to try to use it but that's not really the reason why you want to buy a car. You know? hmm. 
um, we have some problems here because uh, these slow cars, yeah, I mean slow cars, we are driving 82 on the speedometer, which means we are driving under the speed limit. And these slow cars, they uh, interfere with my test because uh, it creates a little bit of drag and, um, and I'm not allowed to drive as fast as I should, which is 90. Okay, now it comes 90. So uh, I can try to over overcompensate by driving slightly faster in the 90 zone. Then. We have been driving for about 25 minutes. We have done uh, yeah, 38 kilometers. And uh, according to the trip meter, it's tiny here, but the uh, average speed is 87 kilometers per hour. And uh, you have several, uh, I have to zoom in there to show you. Uh, it's, it's tiny. Uh, okay, that's the trip. Okay, that's average speed. That one is the average consumption for the trip, 243. And when I did a calculation based on state of charge, it seems to be similar. It seems to be like 250, 60. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, there's way too much uh, measurement error right now. Uh, this one is uh, recuperated energy, not too much, which means that the, the road is fairly flat. That's good. And uh, that's uh, like the current consumption right now. So um, I think you can't reset it now, it's probably current consumption. So, so far it seems like at 90 kilometers per hour you will consume a lot, but... Okay, let's just do the test. 63% uh, 63, 63 now. Let's keep going. Oh man, I mean it's 11 at night now. 11 on a Saturday night and uh, we have a slow Toyota in front of us. It was cruising at 77 on my speedometer, which means like 72 kilometers per hour uh, real speed uh, on the 80 zone. So these slow drivers, they they kind of ruin my test because I'm not um, I'm not able to drive as fast as I would. Like you know, I was trying to cruise at 90 kilometers per hour, but uh, it keeps ruining. These slow drivers keep ruining my test. So the best would be to do it on the motorway which we don't have nearby here, so um, yeah, I will just, um, again, overcompensate uh, the speed a bit, cruise at, let's say, uh, 97, 98 kilometers per hour on the, on the fastest stretch. Um, yeah, so we get, at least we get an average speed in the end, so, but you know, the average speed, there won't be the same as cruising at constant speed versus this yo-yo driving here. But, well, that's the best we can do right now. All right, we are now back at the charging station. So I only had time to drive it from uh, 70, uh, from 75 to 47 percent, and I did some quick math here, and it shows that oh yeah, I I used 28 percent, which is like yeah, about a quarter of uh, of the battery, and also I noticed that the average, hmm, the average for trip meter goes down when we are parked, like even if the car is in park. So when you look at the average speed, and when I park, it was at 87, or 88 or 87 kilometers per hour. Now it's already at 83 kilometers per hour. So we can't trust that one too much, but at least in my test, I tried to drive as close as possible to uh, 90 kilometers per hour. So it was a little bit slower sometimes, a little bit faster sometimes, but 90 kilometers per hour, that's you know the best speed I can do around here where the speed limit is 80 90 kilometers per hour and then the trip meter shows that the uh, average uh, consumption was 231 but when I did the estimation based on state of charge um, you know that uh, we have well, according to the spec uh, they claim that it has 84.7 kilowatt hours so when I do the quick math based on that then the consumption the real consumption based on that is 248 which sounds a little bit too high so there is one theory that we have a very big measurement error here or that uh, we have less than 24 uh, 84.7 kilowatt hour available but okay um it wasn't i mean i wanted to see if maybe the consumption based on stellar charge was lower but in this case it was actually higher so uh, which one should we trust you know uh, I think we can trust the trip meter so the trip meter should sh I mean if it says 230 then most likely it is 230 
As, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, some people uh, might have a theory that it, the, the trip meter showed too high consumption. But again, you know, a 28% measurement is not enough. I should do like a 70 or 90% measurement, like charge to full and then discharge to 10%. That would give me a better reading. But, oh well, I mean, it's 28% is still good enough, so... Um, yeah, and how, how high is, I mean, how much is this? We had a mix of uh, wet road, well, I, I said wet, and it's not like soaking wet, it's like damp road, moist road and dry road. Uh, so, of course, the moist road will add more rolling resistance. Um, and what else? Almost no wind, yeah, like basically no wind. Uh, almost very little elevation change. Actually, the regenerated, the recu recuperated energy was only one kilowatt hour. So that kind of confirms it. Um, and um, this this car is fitted with 20 winch, uh, 20 inch tires. So you can like exclude that. That you know, it's not like it had the 22 inch tires. So how much is this compared to uh, the other cars? Um, Tesla. Model S would use way less at 88 kilometers per hour. It would probably use like um, maybe like 190 watt hour kilometer on the same conditions. And the X would consume more. Uh, my gut feeling says around 210, 220, so still slightly less than the I pace. And as for the other EVs um, like uh, Leaf or uh, e-golf or Kona, whatever all these other smaller cars they usually come like speeds like this i would say about about 100 130 to 150 watt per kilometer because, but they are much smaller so we can't really compare them to uh, ipace and tesla so um well okay so but you know what this test was done with the old software uh and uh, i wanted to do this test uh, because I want to see what happens after the software update. Maybe there, there's uh, like a, there could be like, um, um, how do you, how do I put this? Like a not optimal tuning with the drive train. Whereas we have seen this in model S P85D. That was like the first dual motor that Tesla made. And in the beginning, it was like in 2015, the P85D consume a lot of energy. Like people were reporting 250 watt hour per kilometer, just normal highway driving, more or less like I did. And lots of people were complaining, like, what the heck is going on? Why is it consuming so much compared to the classic rear wheel drive? And then eventually, I think they they implemented, you know, torque sleep. Like you you let the the front motor work most of the time and stuff like that. Or but uh, Tesla sorted it out. And nowadays, if you drive the P85D, you will consume way less than the 250 whatever. So this could be the case for the iPace because you know. All right, uh, um, Jaguar, they had made cars for a long time, but this is Jaguar's first uh, EV and dual motor. So uh, making a dual motor in my head sounds more complicated than just making uh, a front wheel drive or rear wheel drive like most other EVs. So uh, I don't know, we have to see what will happen in, um, in about two, three weeks after uh, Jaguar will um, update the car, yeah. So I think that'll be it. Let's wait for the update. And then if Jaguar will still let me try <laughs> try the car, I would love to do another test. Yeah. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and bye bye.